All right, today we're going to play some Drakes. Uh, the version I'm playing with tonight has been is uh, Ben Friedman's deck from the Pro Tour. It's got no Electromancers, and it's much it's much lower to the ground, which I like. I think I like. Uh, I think everyone's ready for your Electromancers. Like this deck's popular. They have shocks for the Electromancers. Uh, it turns on more like the Chupacabras from your opponent. And if you don't play Electromancer, you can kind of break, you can kind of like dodge it. Also, the fact that this deck has three main deck dive downs kind of means that you're better at protecting a Drake when you get it in play, which is really important. Keep your flyer going, you can kill more two or three attacks. It also transitions to the best sideboard plan, which is just Niv plus dive down just wins so many games. It's weird to keep dive down in against you know, aggressive decks, or to keep dive down in against, you know, I keep dive down in against, all, or some number that almost wins every deck, because if you just land Niv, then it just ends a lot of games. Um, this deck doesn't have a Discovery Dispersal, which is a card that I like a lot, I might look to try it over this. This card's pretty poor, especially if you're playing a lot of control decks, because the discarding is part of the cost, which can be a little rough like they counter it and you've been two for one um sideboard is there's a couple of cool cards like sailor means is actually kind of a cool card that lets you against aggro decks kind of race to your niv while blocking and um just gives you one more mana and holds down like a dodge vanguard deep freeze is just the clean answer to your to opposing nivs like it it hits lyra niv and Adanto Vanguard for, you know, three mana and they don't, you know, you don't two for one yourself, which is nice. Then it's got searches to kind of help, kind of help your control match up to where you can put the search and not only is it another mana, but it does its own search thing. It's not as, it's not as good as in a control deck, but it's very serviceable. So let's jump in. I'm already in a league, I think. This is my second league playing this deck. I think I went 4-1 in the first league. And I lost a mirror. I'm 2-0 in this league. I, I really like this deck. I used to think it, it, it had holes. But like the more I play with this deck, the less that I think it's got holes. Like the more I think that if I can build it right, that it might just be like very solid against everything. Um, it's also pretty, it, with, with eight one mana cantrips, it's, pr well, 12, there's 12 one mana cantrips, it's really explosive, but it's much easier to get, like, to get a good Drake turn, or a Phoenix turn, when you don't have a Electromancer, which was just something I found annoying about the Electromancer builds, is that the Electromancer just died often, and then <coughs> all of your cantrips cost two mana, and it just kind of, like, it clumped up your hand. So I'm excited to see how it is kind of smoothed out. Alright, I would like to play first. Uh, I think I'm going to mulligan this hand. Because even though it's got two islands, all my spells are red. And I'm only going to be one spelling because I don't have any way to get this to my graveyard. So, send this back. Keep this. Lava coil on the bottom. Uh, yield for this turn. If we can hit a second land, we should be in okay shape because um, we can we can uh, chart a course, which will find us what we're looking for. It just makes me think we're playing against Jeskai Control because he came in to play tapped. All right, nice. We're gonna ditch this Arclight Phoenix. Right. I 
go to this turn, actually we'll put F8. So we'll do that automatically. Yeah. All right, when you land. I'm just gonna shock my opponent. They're just gonna like get a Phoenix in play. There's no sense in losing the value. And if if this gets seal away, then effectively my shot traded with this seal away because these cards can't tripped. Okay. So we could be in trouble now. Alright, let's just run this out here. Right. So my opponent have a Drake. I like that we have this dive down. If we can untap with this dive down, we should be in pretty good shape. Like if they just play their own Drake here, it's pretty good. All right, nice. So now, again, we're just gonna lava coil and then attack and just sit behind this dive down. This dive down will help us kill like a Teferi. Um, if they play their own Drake, so let's just come into play. If they kill this, we could be, if they like counter this, we could be in trouble. Okay. All right, so we're going to play our Crackling Drake here. Man efficient puts two lethal threats in play. My opponent's got a cleansing nova. It's a bit rough, but at least we hit another phoenix to follow up. That's why the dive downs are just so good. There's one mana counter. They're just counter spells. And in conjunction with Niv, they just like end games. Okay, so we want this. There's a debate to having this for their own nibs, especially in the Crackling Drake version. And then there's a, um, like, we could have any number of these. So it's 10 cards, which is a lot. So I don't know if we're going to bring in all of them, but I kind of want to ditch Lava Coil. I kind of want to ditch Shock. And then I don't hit ditching, like, two Tormenting Voice because of counter spells. Like, we're soft to Niv besides this deep freeze, but that's kind of like the cost of doing business. We could trim a Phoenix, but we can just hard, we can just hard cast Phoenixes, and that's fine. I wonder if Sailor of Memes is good in this matchup, purely because it, like, powers out Niv. Like, just having Niv plus Dive Down is probably going to win me this match, I think, if I can get to set that up. And it's just, like, something to chart a course onto. Like, this deck is not as good of a Charter Course deck as the Goblin Electromancer version. I think I'm just going to try this. I don't know if this is right or not, but if the Sailor of Means... No, that just can't be. Even for... I mean, I, like, I don't think it's right, but it might just try it for science. I'll try it when I want to play. Cut, like, this last Tormenting Voice. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep this hand. We've got an answer to Niv from our opponent. And, um, okay, that's pretty nice. I think we're just going to start off with a cantrip. Just kind of start getting these things going, getting these drakes big. Okay. 
Okay. So we're gonna be able to hit this, get this search in play, which is nice. This search is gonna turbo flip also. Like you just churn through your deck so well. Okay, they have their own great. That seems like an odd way to do this. Because you're just you're like a significantly worse Drake deck. It's like you're it feels like you're bringing a knife to a gunfight. play uh, another drake and then we're just going to play a drake as well no we're going to draw that actually i might just do that after attacking but i probably can get away with that at some other times so it's a free attack i'd like to just be mana efficient and play this drake all right opponent saw it Okay, negates good draw. It's gonna be a little trouble if they like to. I guess if they if they Teferi me, it's a little annoying. But if they Teferi me and go down, then we should be able to power through. Okay, Lyra is okay because we have Deep Freeze. So no, I'm gonna draw this. And I actually. I think I'm going to do this before combat and just I think I'm just going to ditch this Warlord's Fury because I would like to have these drakes be larger than like so my opponent can't block them this is a seal away okay now we get to untap Unless they have another one. Is it definitely Therion? No, we just Warboss. Okay. Warboss is a little scary. Uh, no, we will draw that. Let me go to attack first. Actually, land here would be nice. And I think I'm just going to opt on my turn to hit a land drop. No, we didn't hit it. So my opponent can now like tuck with the Teferi and get in with the war boss. But we're gonna be able to bring up Phoenix back and kill. Alright, so opponent's got Niv, which is not good. Oh shoot, I should have blocked that. I was so zoned out about the Niv being bad for the home team that... Alright, I mean, that was a nice draw. They draw a card. And now as long as they don't have another Niv, we should be okay. They should be down one more goblin, but all right, we're just gonna get in with the Enigma Drake. And then next turn, they are in the Abyss. They actually have to block this turn, or they're or they're dead the next dead next turn. Then if we hit a spell next turn, we can even crack with a Phoenix. Okay. So this means they have some way to interact with our drakes. And our creatures get trampled next turn. So it's going to be even harder for them to block. Strike, all right. Show me a counter spell. If they fight over this, let's say, like, negate another kill spell. We 
I could have Clarion there to gain life, I guess. And I'm just going to block this thing. I'm not really sure what they can have for three mana. Okay. Charter Horse, but I only have Mary. Oh, so they're just kind of like a Jeskai mid range deck. They're not really control deck. Yes. So they should just be dead. And I don't think there's. We might as well just do this because we just to make sure here. All right, great. Ditch this. Draw a card. Then both our things are trample. So they should just be dead. I think we're getting the old moto lag concession here. Yep, there we go. Hey, Ray, how's it going? You working tonight or are you just watching? The standard is awesome. Check out these sweet things that I got here. Yeah, standard's awesome right now. Like, like it's it's just great. Like everything about standard is great. You're working. How is it down there tonight? <clears throat> Guess there's something special going on for the snow, right? But yeah, check these out. I don't know if you can see them or not. Oh god, that might be too much to say. They're like signed. Got some of these from the GP, which I'm pretty excited about. I've been thinking about a Grixis deck. Like, I think that I think that the format, I think like this right here is like the best card in the format, best creature. And the best way to answer this thing is with the Eldest Root one. Because then you can get it back, which is like just so backbreaking. Especially if people are on like Niv Mizzet plus Dive Down plan then if you just play the eldest reward then they're gonna just like not have an answer to that and especially with how the play pattern is with these decks is everybody just slams niv on five or on six they just play it they don't ever hold up counter spells usually because in these kind of matchups there's no really effective way to kill it you would try and shout this deck i think i looked at that deck do you have scg premium there, uh, Ray. If you do, you should check out Jerry's Grixis deck. I thought that was really cool. I've been feasting on Drake's and aggro. Why would you feast on Drake's? You're killing me, man. It's my deck. Golgari and Jeskai. All right, standard is decent. Nothing special, but there's an aggro deck. We can shock something. So I think we're playing Just Guy Control again. So we're just going to start churning through the deck here. I could hold that for a combo turn, but I don't have anything to combo with anyways. This is a little, bit, a little slow of a hand. I could just fire this shock off, but that's a little, probably a little loosey goosey. Might be able to deal with Teferi with it. Just jamming. Okay, stuck. Your mic is pretty quiet. It is actually pretty far away from me, which is bad. It should be better now. I just zoned out and I had it uh, like far away from me. So I really don't want to cast this Tormenting Voice. So I'm just going to attack and then play another Drake. I want to cast this Tormenting Voice when my opponent has um, isn't tapped out so I don't 2-4 myself.
All right, nice. My opponent is projecting Tell the Wreckage, so why don't we just make him work a little bit for it? If they settle me, it'll let it resolve. We'll get this tormenting voice out of our hand. I think I'm gonna go. Actually, I should have done this before combat, but I think I'm just gonna go for it. Yeah, I could have got in more damage. All right, so we hit an arc like Phoenix. Yeah, I could have got in two more points, but I did not. Search for Scanta. Okay. I think we're still just going to attack with um, one Drake. Keep up, dive down. And these shocks like could do some pretty serious work here in a little bit. Mike should be a little louder now that I've got it closer. This thing resolves. So how much damage is this? It's definitely not 17. What's gonna suck is if they wrath our board, we don't really have a very good follow-up because we don't have a Drake, we don't have like a Phoenix in the graveyard. What is my plan? Just shock them twice. They can't block. And then play a Phoenix and crash. They already played a land. Cast this, get in. I guess I can go opt, but opt just killed the Arclight Phoenix. So it doesn't actually fix the problem. They're still just dead, yeah. Just sending a message. <clears throat> Alright, that's three in a row to set the stream, which is nice. So I think we're just going to board the exact same way we did last time. I'm fairly sure this is more of a control deck. And cut these tormented voices because these just suck to play into counter magic. Just asking to get two for one. Mike is still a little low. Really? All right, I just took five. I just added five decibels to it, so it should that should make a difference. I'm gonna keep this. Yeah, deep freeze is like the, it's like the answer to Nev, I guess. It's just what he, I, I took Ben Friedman's list from the PT, and it's a card that answers like Niv, Lyra, and Adonto Vanguard. All right, we're just gonna get this going. I could save this. Like, maybe I'm supposed to save this for... Because we have this tormenting voice, but we're, we have to, like, draw into what we need. That's better? Okay. You gonna watch Cat play some Death Shadow tomorrow, Teddy? Wow. They just don't have any plays going on. 
DPS. So I, I kind of want to resolve a Tormenting Voice while I can, but these Charter Courses just get so much better after I have a Drake in play. Just ignore them and kill them. I, th I don't think... I, I think that's easier said than done. Yeah, I don't know really what was going on with our opponent, but they just didn't do a lot that game. Counterspell would be nice. Alright, so let's start by just charting after combat. And I likely won't... Depending on what we hit, we'll chart again or not. Only if Brandon is there. I'm going to watch her. I think it's going to be entertaining. So we hit a dive down. I think dive down is enough to not chart again. Especially considering we can opt. And like pump fake a counter spell. Just want to untap. I guess I should have kept, I guess it's greedy of me to not keep that land, especially when I have Niv in after sideboard. She knows, what she's, she's, she knows what's going on. Oh, shoot. Now, I don't really want a Tormenting Voice. But I guess it's like not the end of the world if I do. I also like kind of want to use my mana. Let's just hope we don't get destroyed here. I didn't. I don't remember seeing it. Off the top of my head. No, I remember you seeing it. Yeah, yeah. Hang on. All right. So we hit in a gate. So if we don't get like Teferi right here, we should be good. What did I do? I think I saw that one. I thought you said you liked it. All right, Teferi's kind of a beating. They have to tuck it. Okay. Yeah, let's flip this. You're thinking about trying another deck. Look at you. Yeah, I think we're just gonna play this tapped. I like playing my lands just because um, we're gonna like we're gonna have things to do. Take it easy, Ray. Yeah, let me take my okay. Not actually like. I think what you said is fine. Just follow up to your bill. Even though that's cool. Anything you want on? Playing NASCAR. Yeah, I got. I understand what you're saying there. So I'd like to find a, a way to deal with this. That would be nice. Alright, I guess <clears throat> I'm going to start by charting because I might find a phoenix but I can't bring a phoenix back unless I hit spell but then I can hit another redraw for this. Okay. Never lucky. Alright, so we'll crash into this Teferi. <clears throat> and then I will play another Drake, play an Enigma Drake and shock myself and have Negate up still. Okay. Yeah, it's like Search for His Canta, like, is okay, but it, it's not great. It's more kind of like a flip.
flip land to do more stuff with after sideboard. But it doesn't actually, it's not actually like super right, from what I've noticed here. Wow, they just scoop it up. Holy shit. They just have nothing. That's the third time I've played Jeskai today, and the third time I've 2 0 them. They just drew, oh yeah, so they just drew like absolute garbage. What do we have coming up? That's what we were hitting for the turn. All right, let's play for the old 5-0. I was 4-0 in my last league and lost playing for it, so hopefully I can get one tonight. Get that trophy. I'm going for it, Andy. How are you doing, Andy? The podcast was good this week. I 4 1 last league. What I was surprised about is that I actually beat I beat the big version of Drake's um, earlier, like the one from the Pro Tour. Like Nasif was playing it, and he was playing like the Marari's Conjecture. And I just kind of I just kind of smashed him. Like I shocked his Lava Mancer, then my deck just worked so much better than he did. You are great, Andy. You are great. I really like this deck. The more I play this deck, the better I think it is. The better, like, I think you can build it in such a ways where it's not just a deck that beats Kogari and Jeskai. I don't know if it beats Jeskai, like, to be 100%. This is like, yeah, I like, I like this for like, so I, I played, I played like radical ideas and discoveries with, um, with whatever it is with electromancers. And I just thought that version was just not, not nearly as good. Cause if they ever killed your electromancer, your whole deck was just this clunky pile of garbage. Like you actually had to hit like six lands to bring uh, Phoenix back without an electromancer. And I just thought that, that was like, it's just not something that I wanted to be doing. All right, I would like to play first. Something I still have messed up here is I don't exactly know like when to go nuts and when not to go nuts, like when to be conservative and when not to be conservative. Yeah, I think I've got a mulligan in this hand. I only play, there's only 16 more lands in the deck and I need a red one to have it operate. So it's like an aggro deck, we still can't do anything. Dude, I love snow. All right, let's hope we're playing against an aggro deck. Opponent Mulligan 2, what a nice guy. Uh, yep, we're gonna keep it. I love the snow. It snowed in DC today. I'm so happy. <clears throat> nice. I feel like we got a good chance against anything with Temple Garden in it. All right, we're just going to, like, not show him blue. Maybe you'll think we're, like, mono red with a crap draw. Dude, snow is good. Yeah, Jonathan knows. We're going to play the, the – we're going to play the Flying Wall. I'm actually going to go grab some water. Be right back. We get the old Adanto Vanguard. Do you know how bad I just want to snap off a lava coil on this thing? <clears throat> just to be like, all right, dude, pay for life. It grows my Drake too. That's probably greedy. 
but like I still want to do it. I mean, I could go like Lava Coil makes it indestructible, shock it. If you're going to do that, just use shock. Well, shock, Lava Coil is more mana efficient, right? That's kind of what I want to do. Like, I don't know if that's right to do or not. It's such a mopey. Attacking for one here is just like super mopey. Like, what am I going to do? Shock. Um, because if I attack, I'm trading one for three, and that kind of feels bad. So it's like I'm just going to block, I guess. And if he Conclave Tribunals, because like there's no sense in attacking unless I'm going to get aggressive. Because like trading one for three is not really what I want to do. They play like a Banalish Marshal, I'm going to feel dumb. You, is, so is it right to like get that aggressive? I went to a combat, so I'm not going to do that. But are you just a fan? Is that like, I haven't, this is like, I haven't played this deck quite as much as you have, Andy. But is it, is that like a, is that a thing? I feel like I'm going to get whacked by a Vivian next turn. Mm-hmm. Well, now we're just going to attack for one, and then play this other Drake and have Shock. So if they Vivian me, I can just Vivian the Shock, or Shock the Vivian. Because this looks like Seth Manfield's green-white deck. At least the one that he played at the PT. I do like that it was my, like, I didn't end up going with it, but I do like that it was my gut. Um... This is why I should have done this before combat to give myself this option. I'm not going to do it, but. I'm not, I like that it was my gut reaction to do that. All right. Now, I think we're getting a little more aggressive. I'd like to find another Enigma Drake is nice. So if I shock them, attack for four, they go shock them, attack for eight, they go to seven, play another Drake, and then they have to kill two Drakes next turn. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that was a thing that like happened with this deck. That the fact that my my first instinct was to just fight over this Adanto, I like I just I feel happy that that worked out, you know. I don't think I 5 owed a standard league since like the teamer energy days. Okay, so we're playing against the green white deck. I probably want I don't know how this deck looks like. What the, what this deck looks like. I probably want Okay, it's a land of war elf deck. I want shock. I want lava coil. I kind of just want Niv because whenever I – I just want to bring Niv in everywhere. I'm assuming if you're bringing in these strokes and cannonades, you're probably cutting like one of these because they don't have that much removal. Maybe like 
I guess the lava coil is actually kind of worse than the shock because all the big creatures they play, like all the creatures they play are small. And then if they play like a Lyra, I guess that's a, that's a beating. But we have the disdainful strokes for them. I'm kind of tempted to keep the shocks in, especially on the draw. And just go something like, like crash through is probably worse than first strike to trade with Lyra. This is what my gut says. I could cut one Phoenix, but I don't think we've taken out enough cantrips to warrant getting rid of a Phoenix. Yeah, we'll just unload this. It's, we're playing for it. This is my like my first 5-0 in, in standard in a long, long time. We can't bolt a land war elf, but it's pretty good besides that. We can't bolt the bird on one. All right, we're going to play this to show some weakness. So definitely gonna chart a course. Probably ditch. Probably just ditch shock. Yeah, shock. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna ditch the shock. I kind of want to keep just all of my all of my drakes. The shock's kind of worn out. It's one of them. Welcome. What does this lava coil do actually? Lava coil compare. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna take this lava coil because like we can use we can sandbag this maybe if we're that scared of Lyra. And Shock may be able to do something, like hit their face like we did that last game. So let's just ditch this Lava Coil. Plus, we're going to be tapping out the next couple of turns. Lava Coil being two mana is a lot. There's no history here. Wow. It's just like a Jade Light Ranger. All right. Play land, then play flower. Nice. We're going to Drake Town, USA. Ixalan's Binding. Thank God that was the other one. This is so the only card that I have missed playing this deck that I think it needs. And I think you need like one, um, one blink of an eye. All right, there's Vivian. The land will be sweet. Now I'm gonna just shock this and then play the Drake. Because, like, oh, I can't do that because of Ixalan's Binding. Well, at least we can Tormenting Voice it away. Do another one. Do I want to opt to hit a land drop? Probably, because if I hit a land off this, off this Crackling Drake, then I can hold it Disdainful Stroke for next turn. Yield two this turn. But I guess maybe you don't need if you're gonna keep your blinks in. Right, you get you get that Adanto. And Land World, okay. That'll be good at some point. Especially not want to board out the tormenting voices also, just because of Ixlon's binding. Another binding would suck. All right, Carney T. We can handle Carney T. Can I just race this tyrant? What happens? 
five, 10, so next turn, five, next turn's at least 10, this is 12, this is 14, then jump one more. Yeah, we're just gonna, I'm gonna hold a disdainful stroke this turn, we're just gonna race this tyrant. Dude, this deck is the stones. Now, I'm not, I don't know if it's because like I'm just playing against people that, you know, maybe don't know or understand how to play against the deck. But like, my opponent also didn't put a lot of pressure on me in the in the early game. But it's like this card doesn't really matter. That card would matter. Oh, no, what I do. Yeah, so now they're just super dead. Unless they have like a seal away. So I guess we're looking for. Looking for a dive down. Just in case we get seal away. Should have just ditched. I should have ditched one of my candidates. All right, opponent f six, but let's just do this right. <clears throat> There's a five zero. -oh. My first 5-0 in standard in I don't know how long. I'm just going to sit here and be excited. I'm so excited, I just want to go tell my wife I 5 0 to leave. She's going to be so proud of me. <laughs> Dude, even my dog was impressed. Philly was proud of me, and that's all I need in life. Because when I know Philly is proud of me, that's when I know I've got it. I'm going to play one more league with this deck, as is. But I do, the more I play it, the more I do think that I need a blink of an eye somewhere. These Sailor Marines are so sweet. Like I brought these Sailor Means in twice in this league. I went, went 10 and 1. It's pretty awesome. Um, and the both the times I brought them in, they were just aces. They just shut down um, Mono Red once and bought me like a couple turns against uh, Mono White. I hope I'll find a wife who gives me that kind of support. Dude, they're they're one in a million. Let me tell you what. I have the greatest wife of all time. And I will anybody else that says any different, well, they can they can believe that if they want. They should believe that. So I'll let them believe it, but they are wrong. This hand's kind of slow, and it doesn't have a Drake. I almost want a mulligan this hand. Because, like, this doesn't... I'm not doing anything on turn one. It doesn't only has one land and there's no drake. I think I'm just going to toss this back. Yeah, this hand's got two drakes. You know what's kind of cool? That I play this deck, and I think it's kind of a lot like Death Shadow. Which I, I thoroughly enjoy. It's like... You have a lot of air in your deck. Um, yeah, let's keep the keep on uh, making them think we're not what we are. And 
But like you have threats that just win the game so quickly. What do you got here? Revitalize. This card seems awful. Like, I don't think that you could... Like, if I have to play a control deck where I have to play this card, I just don't think I want to play a control deck. We're just fishing for a land right now. We found it. I'm going to hold this shock in case, you know, we need to finish off a Teferi someday. Or just, like, bring back this Phoenix in a flurry. Yeah, you got it. Nice thing is my opponent plays it to Fairy and pluses, we actually get to kill it. If we hit a land drop, we kill it guaranteed. Because we can with dive down, we can play through a counter spell. I think I'm just gonna cast well. I should have thought about this more. Now I'm kind of shoot into casting the Crackling Drake, which does let my opponent, like, cast a fairy and nug my Enigma Drake, but then I get to just Phoenix it, so it's, like it's not that bad. I'm glad they didn't, I didn't cast my Arc Light then. Revitalize is less a card to stay with me than your life. Yeah, like, I'm just not interested in, in playing control if I have to play a card like that. Like, two man, it just cycles, and you gain three life. Like, is that a legitimate magic card? So, do we go for... I don't know. Like, I have done very well with each deck. I think we're going to try to go for a Phoenix here. We will succeed with Dive Down Backup. I shouldn't have played that. Um, I probably just want to shock my opponent. Or shock this Teferi so that I can split this here and this here. Yeah, dude, this dive down is just like nuts. You're gonna counter this? Yeah, dude. You got it. We're pretty soft to like a uh, a cleansing nova right here. If we get cleansing nova, we're in trouble. They'd have to hit white source. Now we're just going to send it in with bowls because they can't settle us. I have died down so good. I've been just wildly impressed with this card. And I should have just known that it was good because I used to just get so mad whenever like the mono blue deck used to play this. Um, I'm going to play a land out. That'll probably be the last one I play out, though. Yep. You draw cards, dude. I kind of would like it if they played a Crackling Drake. I'd like to somehow get these Lava Coils to trade. Opponent is shocking. Search for his Kanta plus six mana. I think I'm just gonna attack with his Enigma Drake. So I'm gonna cycle this to grow it and just to see another card. 
Because if I attack with this Arc Light Phoenix and my opponent does settle the wreckage me here, then I'm kind of up shit creek without a paddle. All right. It's gonna be like an it's gonna be like an expansion explosion, right? Like they're gonna. Oh, we're just gonna insight. They just like they're just dirtling around so much. Bam. We don't really have much more going on, unfortunately. Like we need, we need to hit, we need to get some. We have to get pretty fortunate, I think, here to win this game. Because if my opponent answers the board, then we just have four cards in our hand that don't do anything. We are ahead, but like the by the slimmest of margins. My opponent just slams two crackling drakes. All right. So what's the point of attacking with both? If they were at six, I would be much more likely to attack with both. But the fact that they're at seven makes me just want to attack with one. How many shocks do I have left? I have two shocks left in my deck. I think I'm going to attack with both. Because they have Chemistry's Insight in the graveyard, so maybe they don't have Settle. And if I attack with both and hit Shock, then the Arc Light Phoenix is lethal. And we have three left. And if I get Settled, I get Settled. I'm not going to play this Enigma Drake out if they don't, unless they kill one of these. That is unfortunate. We're getting close to concession time. Like if they counter this, we'll probably, yeah, we're likely pretty dead, but we'll see. I want to see what this deck is capable of. See if it can at least fight back from a game like this. Like, I don't think it can. Like, I don't think anything comes back from an active search for Escanta and it's a fairy. So maybe that, that answer is no. You're going to shock, you greedy bastard. No. All right, I'm going to figure out how greedy our opponent was. Like, can I get a search back activation in? All right, tormenting voice isn't bad. Just gives this where color switches are fine. Yeah, I yield. All right, so now let's do the same same sideboard plan we have been doing. All right, so we want this. This is the same thing we have been doing. We've been cutting all the removal, leaving in the beacon bolt, just as a, another way to kill. Have three ways to answer. I don't know, like Lyra or Om. Um, have three ways to answer Lyra their own Niv, or like a Legion's War Boss. But I don't even know if it's right for them to board in Legion War Boss against us. Mm. 
All right, seems good, not great. Um, I guess I can lead with an island on one because if I know, I kind of know what I'm looking for with an op. Like I'm looking for an arc white phoenix, looking for kind of like counter spells or a niv. Like I kind of, I know what I need. So I always don't like cantripping whenever I don't know what I need. But now that we're after sideboard here, got it figured out. <clears throat> Plus tanking on it. We probably have like a decent hand that doesn't have a lot of lands. That's what I always think whenever my control opponent tanks forever. Or they have a lot of lands and then have like uh, to ferry or something like that. Like, can I get away not interacting until I play my absurdly powerful planeswalker? And hopefully, it wins us the game. And it kind of seemed like no. Just to ferry. Just I thought to ferry would play a larger role than it has. And it just it really has not. Like, I, I still think it's probably like the best thing to be best individual card to be playing with, but man, it just does not do what it used to do. Um, we're gonna find more lands. I think we're just gonna put this on the bottom. Okay, we found our land. Okay, so we're gonna chart. We could save our charts for these Enigma Drakes. I almost don't hate doing that, just like playing it slow and just turning these charts into just two for ones. I think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to play a tap steam vents and go. Just saw a tweet that said Thanksgiving is only seven days away, which is just an absolutely fantastic reminder. Thanksgiving is probably, uh, Thanksgiving might be. I don't know, I like Christmas a lot, but Thanksgiving might be right up there. Like, just cooking the meal and stuff, it's so good. Just the food's so good, the people you hang out with is so good, there's always good stuff to, there's good beer to drink, like, I love Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think we're just going to play this tapped. As much as I would like to, I don't really think we have to play an Arclight Phoenix game. I think we can just play this Drake, and then like chart a course our opponent out of it. Something else I want to try is I want to try the uh, the um, I want to try out the Jeskai build. So I, I saw my buddy play it last night and it, it looked a little odd. The search, lava coil, jerk. All right, please don't X launch by me. Don't buy any me. Please don't buy any me. No. This is an excellent. This is a binding. Oh, it's their own Drake. All right. Well, we play this game better than they do. Chomp. Oh. oh we hit a dive down too. God, dive down is just my favorite card of all time. I'm gonna change my thing from Team or Battle Rage to dive down. Just get them. I think I'm going to use this negate. No, that was stupid. I should have just dived down. Because that negate can hit like a Teferi. All right. 
Now let this go. Let them uh, go here with potentially thinking that this is going to die. Our drake's getting big. We got a big boy. I should, have, I should have done that in reverse order. It would have been a better play for me to do that. Opponent's not attacking. Okay, so now I actually want to go like this. Ditch this. Oh, I can opt. And then chart a course. Well, now we're going to put this on top. And just crack you for, oh my god, just crack you for like 47 damage. Well now comes the hard part. I guess we just play Crash through. Which makes our Crackling Drake lethal. And we just swing in there with this. Because they have to settle it because we have the dive down. Yeah, my math checks out here, right? Oh, you're dead. They just didn't realize that it had trample. Whew. That was nuts. That was like, that was super nuts. I went from what well, my creature was attacking from four to attacking for fourteen. Oh my gosh! Uh, I think we're just gonna keep the same. I think I want to make one of these tormenting voices a blink of an eye. I think without like, without like the radical idea, electrolyze or electromancer thing, we don't really play quite as good of a long game in our main deck, and we might just get to the point where we just like. Blink of an eye with Kicker or Crackling Drake to make somebody tries to remove it. Then we replay it for a little more value. Uh, I think we're going to keep this. This hand's got a lot going on. Or not a lot. I mean, it's got a lot of like potential. But we also can like, kind of have a free first discard. All right, we hit a Phoenix. So now we have two free discards and Niv, our boy Niv. Our Lord and Savior Niv Mizzet. God, I wonder if you're supposed I think you're supposed to counter these. The more I play against the deck, the more I think that it's it's like probably good to get aggressive on these spells. Yeah, they're going to. I think that's a solid play from the opponent. I have no idea what their hand looks like, but they missed a the land drop. Jeez. All right, I'm going to play a land so that we don't get syncopated. Make them burn a negate. I do think I'm going to opt at the end of my opponent's turn. Because while I would like to set something up where I get to get back some phoenixes, I think it's like that's going to happen. I just don't want to hit my land. Here, I just kind of want to cast a Drake. Alternatively, I might as well actually just cast an Arclight Phoenix because they just shocked themselves. So they probably have like an Ionize up. And it's like, if you want to just whatever, Ionize this, then it's just going to come back. Hmm. So you shocked. You're gonna let this happen and then let me attack. You gotta see it, buddy. I don't know if that's being too cute, but like I will attack with it next turn when I can chart a course. Alright, they lava foil me. 
Okay. Do we get greedy and try to hit a land? I think hitting lands is just really important with when we have a Niv. We didn't hit a land. Oh man, we missed land drops that whole way. Well, at least now we can go looking for a land drop and get back a Arclight Phoenix here. I want this so bad because if they deal with the first one. How many cards can I look at? I can look at three more cards to hit a land drop. It's just so, like this card is so good. That if I can just get this down here, I'm going to win the game. And if they ever deal with my first one, the second one's going to be so bad for I think this might be greedy, but I'm just going to go for it. If it's wrong, then I, I don't want to be right. Okay. We drew a Phoenix. All right, we hit a land. Problem is, let me just do this to just make sure we get another land. Give us the most looks at Niv next turn. All right, we'll just hold that. I'm just going to attack and then play a Drake after combat. My opponent wants to counter this, they can counter this. Because we have we have the prize. It's kind of nice that if they have chemistry's insight here, we're playing like head on into it. If they counter this, then okay, they're not, but they're not drawing cards. My wife's giggling at Phil. Sounds like he's being entertaining in there. All we want here is a land. And we're going to slam Niv before attacking. So if they go to deal with this Arclight Phoenix, then we get to draw cards. If they just to strike it, we get to draw cards. Which that is what happened. Okay, this is why we kept the second one. I might be a little more conservative with the second one, like save it for when I have like a dive down. I kind of want to just hold this crash through. We're just going to start out by attacking, play a Drake after combat. So I would like to surprise a Teferi or something. Okay. Put a lethal threat into play. Now we're just kind of like not spinning the ball. I mean, my opponents missed a lot of land drops this game. 
which likely has a lot to do with what's going on. They did have a lot of ways to interact with us. If they deal with this, I'm just going to jam another one. I should have probably crashed through. Okay. You're dead. Didn't even need the second nav. But my opponent also was on four lands for a majority of that game. Let's return. That's what? That's six in a row. Keep the streak going. I would like to play against a black green deck. I have not played against black green while playing this deck. And I hear that's a solid matchup, but I just haven't done it. I haven't played against it. I think Ginger, Mr. Black Green himself, says that Black Green's favored. But I'm not sure what to think of that. Because that guy is in love with that deck. Maybe maybe he's maybe he's a little skewed. I don't know. I think I'm gonna keep this hand. I have three one mana red cantrips and we're on the draw. So I think we're just gonna go with it. Might as well do a little plug here while we're waiting. So again, my name is Dylan Hovey. I'm a part of the Card Hoarder Network. I appreciate you all for stopping by my stream, hanging out. Uh, you should check out Card Hoarder for your Magic Online needs. Uh, if you're looking for paper cards, you should check out Game Appraised. They are linked below. They're a store in upstate New York where I learned to play. All my streams are archived on YouTube, so you should check them out. And if you ever want to interact with me about Magic, you can check me out on Twitter. That's also linked below. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna keep. I don't know. Like, I think I don't really think I'm supposed to mulligan hands like this. All right, playing the mirror. This is Yuya's version. So this is a Electromancer version. So I want the trample one more. So I want to save that. If I hit a land and can kill an Electromancer, that's likely gonna be pretty important. Better lucky than good. I also like how this version of the deck just has eight removal spells. Like it just isn't skimping. Alright, let's look for I'm gonna save our cantrips. Because if we hit like a charter course, then we can put one in the graveyard. If we hit a land, we can bring back a Phoenix. Uh, now I'm kind of priced into it and want to find a land. If I hit a land, next turn I can play Enigma Drake with Dive Down Up. I guess First Strike is actually pretty important in these Drake Offs. Another Drake. 
plan, please. Maybe that's still just jammed right there. I don't know. Jeez. Fountain would be nice. Red source, so I can just bring back this Drake. Just there's something on the battlefield. This is the, I guess this is a little bit of a struggle. Uh, it's so greedy to not to bottom this. I want to bottom this. Adult. They just are fighting it up. Okay. So their hand's probably full of removal, which is pretty solid against the old dive down plan here. Can we like grow their Drake? Well, there's definitely a chance that we just like run them out of the gym with this crash through. Like if we get enough creatures into play, then our opponent's gonna have to just chump their whole board away. Probably was have like a really awkward draw. Yeah, I don't even think I can cast this because it just costs too much mana. I guess I actually could have attacked. This was all kind of stupid. But next turn I can cast. Put one, two, three. All right, there's an electromancer. So I could just die here. So this is four, eight, twelve. There will be blocks to be made. Yeah, I just passed the turn. Can I actually block and then use maximize velocity on defense? Or dive down on defense? And a land. And they bring back another Phoenix Grows. Okay, so I just go block, block. No, that doesn't work. No, I just plus on this one. I just dive down here. So this is what, six, that'll kill me, six, 12, yep, yeah, that does kill me. Oh, oh that feels bad. 
but like I let him untap with an Electromancer. And that's the version, like, if that version Electromancer lives, then it's just awesome. What a beating. Okay, so we're on the play. So I kind of want to bring in Niv. Deep Freeze. And I think that's it. And I kind of want to cut shocks on the play. Maybe keep in like three shocks. Maybe I'll just cut the cantrips. I just don't want to get wrecked by a Goblin Electromancer. Being able to kill that on sight's important. Maybe I cut like one of these, one of these, one of these. Cut two of these because we're on the play and we can like lava coil. But I'll definitely look to bring them back in on the draw, I think. Yep, we'll keep this. I'm just going to crash through on one just to get us up to our third land. Okay. Now I might not. Well, I guess. I don't know. I think I want to use the charter course to draw two cards. Though I could also look for removal. Like to kill, uh, kill an Electromancer. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I just don't want to not do anything this turn. So now, like, even if they Electromancer me here, I'm playing a Drake into another Drake. Didn't have it. Nice. We could just not draw lands for a little while longer. That would be great. It's a radical idea. Okay, lava coil, you got it. So let's now just be efficient and get a crackling drake in play. We hit dive down. That's half of the combo. Dive down plus Niv is Pestermite plus Glitter Glen. Put it on top. So you're looking for a Lava Coil? Okay. Get a guy out here just trying to make it. Well, Deep Freeze deals with that. It's not killing Niv, but... I think I'm in trouble. Kind of flooding out. Might get us going. I guess we can get. Ooh. Oh man, we have Niv plus Dive Down next turn. Just the things that dreams are made of. I think I could get my Arc Light Phoenix back, but I think it's just so important to set this up that I'm alright leaving the Phoenix on the table. And again, if they want to lava coil this, I'm alright with it. No, they're going to Discovery, okay. I'm just going to yield through the turn because, like, just the end game is worth it. Yep.
for what we lack in the mirror, I think we make up in the mirror by just being like just being better at doing this. I wonder if I'm supposed to keep in bring in search for Iskanta. So he lets me bottom land a little more aggressively because it becomes a land while filtering the draws. Yeah, see, they, so my opponent has more cards in the hand, and they're just, like, dead. Okay, so on the draw, I want more shot. Though we didn't see... I guess we didn't really see a Electromancer. So maybe just keeping two is fine. Ugh. I'm going to cut one Tormenting Voice for one more shock, just on the draw. I hope everyone watching is having a good night, having fun at least. I'm enjoying playing this deck. I'm a big, big fan of what's going on here. I'll probably play one more match and then I'll have to take a break and just take my dog out. But I'll finish the league for sure. All right, we got Niv. We have a way to not get wrecked by a turn one Electromancer. I'm going to go like this just because if my opponent does Electromancer me, that I want to be able to kill it. And I want to do that more than I want to opt. Even though I know what we're opting for. Hey, Nameless, how's it going? Slam it. Maybe they boarded it out. Maybe Electromancer is just bad in the mirror. Maybe I should have keep them both. Well, now we're going to ditch this Phoenix. Okay. Yeah, you got to check this deck out, Nameless. This, this standard deck's got you written all over it. Worst was the worst, we can kill that, but I kind of just want to double shock it and then opt and just try to hit, just keep hitting my land drops. If I'm going to double shock it, I'm actually just going to do it right now. I don't want to. Maybe they board out. The Electromancers in the mirror because I haven't seen the Electromancer. I haven't seen an Electromancer in either of the post board games. So maybe that's just what they do because it's not about really playing a fast game. Um, I'll put this on the bottom. I could just naturally hit a land drop. Yeah, that's nice. I could beacon bolt this. But I don't really want to do that. I think we're just going to play. Get this out here. Actually, I'm going to... No, I can beacon bolt it next turn. Next turn. Because, like... If they play a Murmuring Mystic or whatever, I can just go Crash Through and then Beacon Bolt. My opponent can Beacon Bolt 
this, but they're not doing as much with their turn. And worst comes to worst, next turn I can just, if I hit a land, I can just bolt the Drake and crash through, bolt the Drake, shock, get my Phoenix back. I am doing great. We're just going to take this in the chin. Yeah, I'm just going to go for the kill here. We're going to look for a land. We did it. It's not exactly the kill, but it is. It's a two turn clock, and our opponent can't even nib us next turn. I've never brought in counter spells in the mirror. I don't really like the counter spells. I think you're just a pure velocity deck. Okay. They did the Phoenix. Um, yeah, we're just going to step on their throat while they're down. Because now they can't, they have to answer this nib before they do anything. And half the re half the way they answer this nib is by just putting a bunch of creatures in the play. Yeah, just shoot you. All right, I will be right back, everyone. I'm gonna take my dog out. So I will, I'm just gonna put this up here. I'm gonna take the dog out just for tonight and then I'll be right back.
Oh, just call it fell. Go see mom. Okay, go see mom. Good one, go see mom. Okay, we're back. Let's jump back in. Keep this playing against the young prodigy. I wonder who that is. All right, looks like we're playing against White Weenie. And we don't have a shot. We have a lot of I'm going to keep this. We're looking for like a third land, or we're basically looking for a third land. Because of how we're going to win is we're going to play a Drake. We're gonna stick it. We're gonna kill something. Stick a Drake, and then be in good shape. Okay. All right. We're gonna tormenting voice because there's nothing worth blob coiling here. I'd like to find a second Drake. As long as we don't get run over, we're going to be in good shape. Sailor Means coming on the sideboard. Oh, Sark in the Bad. Thank you very much. I appreciate the sub. Are we going to lock it on? Ooh. That locks it on as a big boy. So I play this. Block here. Their last card's a removal spell. What happens? Their last card's a removal spell. I don't really see I'm winning the game. So this is 3, 6, 10 damage. 6, block next turn, I'm dead. Three, block here. Take four, seven. Block this, take 11, go to 5, next turn kill this block here, hopefully I don't play anything. Maybe set something up where we can, <coughs> um, where we can like, chart a course into two phoenixes. God, you have a tribunal too. Come on. Have a heart, what is this? What is this? This is three, six, two. I don't even think we have an out. So let's go chart a course. Yep. Dead as a doorknob. Dead as a doorknob. All right, so I assume that we sideboard in. <clears throat> assume we want Karenade, Cannonade, Sailor of Means, Deep freeze and maybe Niv. Niv is the best way to clean up their board, but it might be too slow. I don't know how to sideboard. I don't know how to sideboard this matchup. My gut tells me to cut these. Cut like Tormenting Voice. 
Beacon bolts too slow. And cut one dive down. <clears throat> I kind of like the nib because we have the sailor means to help power it out. And as soon as we get nib on an open board, or nib nib on any board, as long as we can like cast spells in the next turn, is gonna clean everything up. I'm gonna try this. You need Beacon Bolt for Lyra. This deck plays this deck A plays Lyra. So this is Ellenberg's list, right? If it's got the veteran Loxon on, Jacob Ellenberg. Jacob Ellenberg. Decks, Megan, uh, this hand's Mulligan. Does he play it? Let me see this. Andrew Ellenberg, not Jacob. All right, we have two lava coils. Put that on the bottom. Heal two this turn. He didn't even play Lyra in his deck with Veteran Loxodon. Oh, I should have I should have Warlord's Fury. I was just like doing something else and didn't. Not gonna lie, I kind of just want to trade. Like even though this is kind of mopey. I, I kind of just want to like kill stuff. And we have two. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna like as mopey as this is, I think I just want to like because I'm using my mana next turn. Turn after that, I'm likely gonna go like Warlord's Fury, kill something. I could have played a tap land and played it, but they got the guy in play, so you got a Conclave Tribunal, okay. What am I looking for? I kind of want this, I kind of want this land. Do I want two lands? Um, do I want two lands? <coughs> I think I'm just going to ditch this, play this, play this. We do another land, yeah. I, just, I don't, I don't want to draw too many lands. We have a nice turn next turn where we can go like Lava Coil plus Drake. That turn's kind of over. Though we can like put a hurt on this Ajani. I'm not gonna lava coil this because they don't have um because they're probably just gonna end up plusing. And hopefully we hit a spell next turn. Oh, that's a little annoying. So this takes this vampire. Yet another tribunal. So if I hit another spell, I can deal with this. Um, I can deal with this thing here. This is a Loxodon. Anything but a tribunal. God. <clears throat> we run here the second tribunal like one tribunal is tough 
the second one was kind of a demon. <clears throat> when is this all this all said seven? Yeah. Oh, that was a one sided beating. Both games. What did I mull I mulligan that game? But I mulligan two a decent hand. <coughs> I mulligan to Warlord's Fury, Lava Coil, Lava Coil. And three lands. <coughs> Yeah, I was just like a super ass kicking. So the, yeah, I really like this deck. The only card that I want, I think it will want to blink. I think one of these Tormini voices should become a blink of an eye. Just because you're a little cold at Ixalan's binding. And you can get like quirky with blink of an eye. Like save one of your creatures to be able to play a bit of a longer game. Which you're not very good at. Yeah, we're going to keep this. Leave off on this mountain. <coughs> See, if we can guaranteed hit a couple um, lands on top, this hand's pretty solid. Steam vents. Playing the mirror, it looks like. Playing against the mirror, playing control. Hopefully they run out of Electromancer here. Okay, so playing is control. All right, now let's just jam this Drake. <coughs> if my opponent doesn't counter this, then okay. Then we just had the dive down to handle it on the back end. Land. Alright, you get counter spells all the way up the chain, bud. No, gas. Okay. I'm just gonna attack and play another one. And then have dive down up. I could also shock this, but I don't really want to do that. My drakes are just gonna like get bigger than his drakes. Got him. Yeah, as long as we don't get cleansing Ovid here, we're in good shape. You have a hero. They only knew how bad this was going to go. So I just lava coil this, shock the Teferi, and then split the difference. So then I get in damage against them, and I get damage. Well, I guess that's kind of OP. They counter this, this is gonna be a little annoying. So I have to use the shock anyways. So I might as well just shock this. I don't know. I'm just gonna attack both of these at Teferi. I wanna like use the least amount of cards here possible. 
and I will just shock my opponent. Oh, this is so mopey. Because I have to use the shock. I guess we could have just attacked and then shocked the Teferi and saved the Lava Coil. Yeah, maybe that was better. That was probably better. Oh, they just keep going up for this thing. Just keep suiciding their Teferi. Really don't want to run out another one of these. Right now, I don't mind it. Attack to fairy, attack to fairy. Again, I'm going to play the one that draws me a card and is more costs more mana. So if I get wrath, it doesn't feel as bad. We chain some spells next turn, my opponent could die. Wow, we're inciting. That's <clears throat> that's good for the home team. We get draws and definitely kill them this turn. That's a good start. You're not using subbed. God. We just go for it, put him at two. Or just leave him at two. Probably just leave him at two. Because this ain't Death Shadow. You're going to try to kill something? You try to kill something, you die. Okay. <clears throat> It's kind of an unfortunate to brick there. I could have just gone for it, but like they easily could have something. It's gonna feel real bad if they've got like <clears throat> whatever it is now. Cleansing Nova. <coughs> Chemistry Insight game. I guess I can have land settle the wreckage. We'll play some Death Shadow when we get close to the Invitational. I've got a, I guess I have a tournament the beginning of December as well, SCG Baltimore, that I'm playing in that I've got to, I've got to figure out. I'll probably just play the same, give or take the same Shadow list I've been playing. I, the biggest thing that I have to do is I have to make up ground and standard. All right, so again, we board in 10. And we cut... One, two, three, four, and cut these, and then go for it. <clears throat> I saw you streamed a little while there, Squatchy. You were playing, what, the Lich's Mastery deck? And I've, I've seen alerts for you going live a couple more times. I've just been busy and haven't seen, haven't seen, um, I may all stop in, but I did watch your Lich's Mastery for a little while. That deck was fun, but meme-ish. <coughs> Is it actually good? Like it must dump on the aggro decks, right? The fact that they play, like the fact that you can actually make revitalize a good card. Like revitalize just two mana draw four when you have a lich in play. It's good for screen black. Well then that was a good place to be about a month and a half ago. Non burn red deck and non. Hmm. Heater. This is hands okay. Like to see another land. Show weakness. <clears throat> non burn red deck in non red white aggro. 
It doesn't beat up on River Viagra. So we could like value out with this, but I think I just want to ditch a Phoenix. It's basically like drawing two, and we did hit some land drops, which is important. I'm gonna jam this Enigma Drake next turn. I haven't played against any black green on the row. Hopefully this sticks. I seriously doubt it will. But it would be sweet. Yeah, we saw that coming. <clears throat> it's worst matchup is red-white aggro. That's the same thing with this deck. Alright. So I am just gonna jam another Drake. And hope that we don't get to ferried. <clears throat> We're getting to ferried. All right. He's going up. That kind of makes me feel stupid holding a disdainful stroke. Could like get into this thing, or I could play a crackling drake. I think my best play is to play a crackling drake. As mopey as that is, we're not gonna get syncopated. <clears throat> I could have put the Teferi to one with an Arclight Phoenix, <clears throat> but that has me like tapping out before combat. So we got a Nova. So now we're going to go shock, hold up the Stainful Stroke, and try to get in here with this Phoenix. Unless we hit a bunch of spells here. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna we're gonna go for it. Tilt. <sighs> now we're probably dead. That that might have been greedy of me, but like, I, I think casting a phoenix into this is likely a losing proposition. I think I I feel like I played this game poorly. I feel like somewhere along the lines, I did not do this well. So just scoop into a nib. Okay, that's not you. So I'm just tapping out with counter spells in my hand too. Yeah, I don't think I played this very correctly. Um, I guess we don't. Because if we cycle this, it's like putting it in the graveyard, the same thing where we might get some phoenixes back. <coughs> Maybe I'm just going to pass, activate his Kanta. Maybe just try to figure out, try to set up some really big phoenix turn. Okay, I could have countered that. Maybe I should have. Because like they're gonna end up playing a Niv soon. I can't counter Niv. We're likely pretty dead already, but if we hit Niv plus dive down, maybe we're in good shape. Because we can go Niv, dive down, and negate. Yeah, you got it, man. You gotta discard two cards. Which Just 
can't take them home with you. Let's see what we got. All right, I'm just gonna take dive down. I think one of the two ways I win is dive down Niv. That's more reliable than just going nuts, I think, especially when they have, well, maybe I'm supposed to try to go nuts. Oh, it's actually not awful. Kind of have to counterspell it, but because I kind of got it covered. All right, now we're just going to get in here with a Phoenix, start getting after this Teferi a little bit. comes in doesn't accomplish too much but it's something we're gonna need something pretty we're likely drawing pretty dead like this search for scanta has got to get us like Gotta bring back some phoenixes and find us Niv. Opponent just keeps drawing cards. <clears throat> Get two lands back. It's cool to see this as Kanta start going. All right, that's a Beacon Bolt, which isn't bad. Which the Beacon Bolt is at least going to stave this off. But I might not even cast that. I might just play the Enigma Drake because that lines up with Disdainful Stroke pretty well. Opponent can just nug this with Teferi, but I doubt they will. Yep. Eight damage. Man, we might actually get this to fairy. We're going to four. The opponent knows our last card, so they should just attack. Because we're going to be able to get that thing dead anyways. Because unless I don't think there's two counters, they have double negate, I guess. Yeah, it could. Start here.
So one, two, three, four. If I beacon bolt my own drake, then I get back four phoenixes. <clears throat> All right, I think this is going to work better than, <clears throat> and if we get settled wreckage, we get settled wreckage. Probably should send three at Teferi, one at our opponent. All right. All right, we got Teferi down. <clears throat> You kept in, kept in death and clear on. Really? Really? <clears throat> All right. Bottom. I will counterspell this back because that'll bring our phoenixes back regardless. I will ditch this mountain. Play this. Holy shnikes. <coughs> wow. My opponent has four cards in their hand. This is wild. They just keep digging. Get another clarion. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's both of our nibs. We go over both of our nibs. We can't shuffle. We have to like search for his Kanta our way there. Okay. Nope. It sucks that both of our nibs were right there. That was one of our better chances to win. Right, well, we can at least deal with that next turn. There's Nev. So we have to find double answer here. Um, 
Okay, we're going to get a little greedy here. Take this Niv out. Favorite counter spells and like. Okay, they're just flashing back the insight, okay? And now let's see if we can opt. I have to put this on the bottom. I have to hit a one mana card. Gas. Put on top. All right, we got him back in there. Man, this uh this has been nice. It lasted a lot longer in this game than I thought it was going to. <clears throat> this is what the deck played. I literally just copied copied the uh copied the sixty. Lava coil down. Kill three drakes. Lyra, problem. Should just attack. Dive down. So this is going to get us closer to Niv. Um. Uh, is this trample going to be how I win the game? I don't think it is. I wonder who's going to deck first. Myself or my opponent? So we're going to go double block, and then we're going to dive down block here. Card. It's insane that we're in this game. Like, I thought I was dead in the wall. My opponent's had a Teferi in play for like most of the game. And like, while I am certainly behind, I'm like, I'm in it. Block here, block here. Because I can trade here. You can help them form the other cantrips. Okay. Does this work? It appears like this is going to work. Jeez, this game's been wild. So I have to take out this Teferi this turn. Which means we have to get back... Uh, we have to get one of these back. That's pretty solid. Hit that. Crack this to fairy. 
Holy shnikes. Now they do have one, they can have up to at least one more Teferi in their, in their deck. <clears throat> they have like a Cleansing Nova and they destroy all artifacts and enchantments. I'm just going to block here because that's what we've got to do. Yeah, there's both of our nibs. So we're dead. That's unfortunate. Like we went through our deck two times and just couldn't get to our nibs. It's a bit of a Tiltaruski. Very cool game, though. Very cool game. My computer's tweaking out because of how cool that game was. Um, I'm going to bring in one more Lava Coil. One more piece of removal. I really think the Tormenting Voices are just kind of loose to play into counter spells, anyways. <clears throat> Playing here with my, I got my Death Shadows signed, Squad Chief. The girl, the artist was at Grand Prix Atlanta. You like them more than Chart, of course. Tormenting Voice. They can get countered. I think we're going to play this slow. I'm going to leave the Sulfur Falls and then next turn chart and have the Warlord's Fury to bring back the Arclight. Because like, the, like, discarding a card is a part of the cost. So if you just like discard a card and they crack, they get your guy. Oh yeah, but like it's not, it's not necessarily about discarding a Phoenix at the board, right? Like it's a little bit more of a grindy game. And if you're discarding like exactly Phoenix, and you have a way to reliably bring it back, it's not awful. I guess I couldn't even Warlord's Fury last turn, so like my whole talking point was mute was moot. Stroke's nice. Stroke will help with the first threat. All right, we got our boy Niv. <clears throat> so now we just have to get to the Niv. We have the Splinter Twin combo. of Niv plus Die Challenge. <clears throat> yeah, it definitely... And plus, like, Chart, of course, lets you play, like, the value game also. Because, like, there's sometimes when you don't want, you just want cards. <clears throat> like, if I draw a Chart, of course, next, time, next turn, I'm, I'm doing it after I attack, because I like all my cards. Head. So I'm gonna hold this because I like I, if I hit a land, I'm probably just gonna pass. Just play a little bit on the slower side. Like we can afford to play slow because of the way that our hand is made up here. Wow, we, we did draw exactly all of our die bounds. But I'd like to save this to be able to get the Phoenix back. Now we're now we're up shit creek. <clears throat> We get this Niv in play. It's never going to die in real life. <clears throat> Problem is we've got to get to that. Which is appearing like it's going to be very difficult. 
<clears throat> so I think it's important to hit land drops, especially at your sideboard, to like set your deck up to play a slower game. It's a pretty power play from my opponent makes me think they have another one. We need a red source. Red source off the top and come on. Come on, red source. That's not bad. It's kind of the next best thing. Especially if it just lets us use our dive downs. Don't play a nib. Oh, that's like not even a real land. Oh, we're so dead. <clears throat> There's no way they block. You're crazy if you block. The trips dive down definitely did not look good right now. We were pretty set. If they, if they had any other play but nip here, we were pretty solid. I don't even know why I'm still playing. This thing just completely runs train. I don't think anyone in the history of the world has successfully raised the Niv. Oh, wow. They're playing some defense. Whatever, man. We might as well cast it and send in with it. Like, if they block it. Then they're taking six at least. No negate. I guess if they have a negate, they get to shoot my Phoenix. Wow. No way. Those dive downs turned out to be all right. Okay, that makes sense. Do you have a follow-up? Don't have a follow-up. Come on. You didn't have two mana to play last turn. God, they got one. All right, we're good. We almost, we had a chance against the first one. Let's get to our last match of the night.
so pumped to go like 14 and one with this deck today, but I lost two in this league, which is always a little sad. <clears throat> lost to Jeskai and lost to Mono White right here. And right here, the 14 and one dream was alive today. All right, this is the last match of the day. All right, this game's pretty good. This plays more of a fair game. <coughs> but we do get to curve into a Drake, which is always nice. Playing in the mirror again. Hopefully they feed us an Electromancer. Play it, come on, no. Digital Warlords here, so they don't have Electromancer. So let's see if we can put them on the back foot here. <clears throat> yeah, wishful thinking, thinking I was going to untap with that. But we're just going to be mana efficient. Serve in for three here. We are behind. They are kind of thimble fuddling around, but I think it's gonna to be tough to. It's gonna be. It's gonna be pretty tough to kill them before they figure out something. It is a crackling drake, so they're short on lands. Yeah, man. Just three, two haste beats. Kill that one. Okay. The nice thing is we're only one spell from getting that back. And if they feed, if they play a Drake here, then we can get it back. Problem is we're flooding out a little bit, but my opponent is dead on board. Wow. <coughs> well, sometimes you just go, sometimes you win the fair way. So I think, I'm not quite sure how to sideboard in the mirror. I don't really like the counter spells. I think it's just all about velocity and churning through your deck. I think I just want Niv and Deep Freeze. And then I'm just going to cut my shots. Because they don't have whatever it is. I think we're going to keep lean. Try to just churn through our deck. Keep bringing our Phoenixes back. Like, being able to counter the Crackling Drakes is nice, but you just don't have the time. I don't think you really have the time to do that realistically. Like, I think you're just, it's all about velocity. And like, the first one to blink loses. And that's what happened to us. Like, we, <clears throat> right there, we just, 
hit land drops and just constantly put pressure on our opponent. We're lowering this. Keep this. I'm gonna put this on top because it's gonna leave us the option to use the um, charter course as like a value. You know, if we want to play a little bit slower, like next turn we'll go tormenting voice, ditching Arc Light Phoenix. Ooh, they missed the land drop. Ooh. All right, we hit. So we can't quite bring back an Arc Light Phoenix. They brought that in the mirror. It's interesting. So we have a pretty awesome turn next turn no matter what. We can either bring back two Phoenixes or we can play a Drake. I wonder if Search for his Cant is a mirror card. Because like it seems slow, but like the best part about it is just like activating um is how it just jumps you mana. That was a little unfortunate. Alright, let's get the crackling drake in play. All right, we hit off. So now we can bring back both Phoenix Kicks next turn and crack for at least eight. Or crack for at least 11. Excuse me. Show me your dive down. Okay. One, two, so that's going to bring them back. Now we're digging for a nib. And I can give my creatures first strike. What am I looking for? I'm looking for a removal spell. Let's go creatures I control gain first strike. So this means I can attack with this drake and then just eat. And charge creatures I control gain trample. So this is nine. Eleven trample. Eleven seventeen. But they can just eat both of the those the drakes. So I'm just gonna swing in for nine and then play another drake. And then next turn we can go Warlord's Fury plus crash through again and likely kill our opponent. Unless they don't kill me here, which they could do if they give their thing trample. Beacon bolt. Okay. So 
Warlord's Fury first strike. I wonder if I was supposed to cast one more spell to make it so each one of these were his Bova's turn. Nine, eight. So you have an opt. Yeah, they probably have an opt or a dive down. To hit a way to get a phoenix into the graveyard. So I think I can attack with one. And play an Enigma Drake and pass. Yeah, if I would have played one more cantrip last turn, but I wouldn't I theoretically like wouldn't have been able to get it this turn. Okay, that's a good sign. Deep freeze. So I go to one. Go. Was this a shot? Yeah, and then not drawing the spell to go with Niv gets me. Oh, man. I wonder if the search is good. I wonder if the search is good. I don't think it is. I think it's too slow. Maybe I'll try it. Arcane Phoenix Niv. Maybe I'll try it. Let's see if I can find a room for this just to give it a try. King first strike. Let's just shave one of each of these. Let's try this. I'd like to see how if the searches are actually good. I'm hesitant to believe to believe they are. All the video, the tonight's video you're gonna be able to find on YouTube in the morning. I'll have posted up with a list and timestamps of all the matches. Alright, we're gonna keep this. We have two one mana cantrips and a tormenting voice to kind of fix us up. Two one mana red cantrips. So we have three looks at a land. We're three and seventeen. We're one and seventeen three times. Alright, we hit a land. I might not tormenting voice until I can hit like a um yeah, I'm not gonna tormenting voice until I can hit like I don't want to get a three this turn until I can hit an arc light phoenix. There's the search. All right, now I think I can get away with Tormented Voicing because I can ditch this Beacon Bolt. Nice. 
go through this turn one. A blue source would be nice. Because if we hit a blue source, I have ending with or Drake plus dive down. Yeah, dude, you just turbo. You, the nice thing about these searches, though, you just turbo flip these things. Tough to activate, but man, they just they just turn into mana. Nice. That's big game. This is like playing stub in the shadow mirrors. This is so good. Beacon Bolt is a sorcery. I dive down, you dive down, we all dive down together. And now we're just going to try to step on his throat. I'll put this on the top. Crack him for seven, then play Lava Coil plus Arclight Phoenix. Oh my god, if you have Beacon Bolt, land Beacon Bolt. Don't play another land and Beacon Bolt me. Oh. Now we're dead. Oh. I just got wrecked by Beacon Bolt. That was nuts. Yep, and they lava coil me. Now we're like slowly getting into the point of the game where they can afford to activate Search for Escanta. Appears they're running on empty. And I slam a nib. Ugh. I think we're going to ditch this lava coil. Don't hit. Uh, something to kill this Arclight Phoenix. They're at one life point above having both Phoenixes lethal. All right. Now I'm just going to attack and draw two cards. Because if I draw two cards, then I have a higher likelihood of being able to bring back a Phoenix next turn. And they're at one, so they're just dead to like anything here. They don't have any Phoenixes in their graveyard. Wild. They did hit a lava coil though. They play Steam Vents. They have no red mana up. Whoa, they're gonna send it in there. That's nice. You have a dive down. Don't dive down me. I swear to God, you. And now we're just super dead. Like they have to brick on his Kanta and they have to brick on their draw step. Whew. 
Oh, heartbreaking. That was tough. But let's go back to the deck. Let's look the deck over for a quick second, and then let's get ready to call it a night. Okay, so the only change that I would make about this deck is I would make this quantity. I would make it a blink of an eye, and I think I would just call it after that. I'm pretty sure... Like, because the tormenting voices are kind of sketchy against Jeskai. Um, yeah, I really think that's it. I think uh, maybe I want a third Niv. I don't know. Niv is just so Niv. I don't know. Niv is. But I appreciate y'all for showing up and hanging out, and I hope you guys all have a great rest of your uh, night and week. I'll be back on Sunday, so I hope to see you all there, and everyone have a good rest of your night.